we each have five titles they could we could have each other's titles on here so i think let's just go kind of like let's do one at a time kind of just briefly we have about 20 minutes to do this so uh morgan i'll let you go first what was your number five? Oh, my number five okay yeah i was checking to make sure i did this in order my number five is shiva baby okay i have this at my number six this was just barely cut out of my list it's excellent it's- it's excellent. Uh, we'll talk about Shiva Baby real quick because I know this wasn't as big of a film. Uh, it became kind of a sensation, but it's very much an indie-rooted film. So what what do you love about Shiva Baby? So Shiva Baby, uh, my roommate, my best friend, convinced me to watch it. He's like, you have to see this movie. It's fantastic. And um, yeah, I mean, it was fascinating. I mean, it was basically, it's Rachel Sinat, who you mentioned, and Molly Gordon. Um, and it's it was all, it was a story of one day at a shiva um which i i don't know i mean a whole whole lot about um judaism but is i believe like a funeral or memorial service and it's this girl coming of age and basically what it kind of means to be a young adult and come back home to your family for this event and you know she runs into a lot of people from her life uh in different capacities and you find out all of these pieces of who she is throughout this day of her being at this event so I loved the format. I thought a movie about just one entire day was such a smart way to tell a story. And the acting was excellent. I mean, it was just, it was really. Yeah, no, it's a really wonderful movie. I fully agree uh, on those sentiments. Uh, I And I, Rachel Sennett, I think, has very much become a key in Gen Z storytelling. I mean, and I don't want to maybe step on anyone's uh, toes by I mean bodies 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 is another of her films she just had a recent film bottoms that released last weekend uh that has been like I, she does feel like a voice for gen z again honorable mention for me michael what about you what's your number five my number five is uh a pretty new movie it, i i think it might even still be in theater some places uh it's talk to me uh by raka raka uh aka michael and danny filippo um, this is that movie. I was very lucky. I got to see that, uh, an early screening of that at South by Southwest this year with, uh, with, uh, Danny and Michael, uh, absolutely loved this movie. And I'm not the biggest horror guy, but I absolutely loved, uh, talk to me. It's, um, the reason I think it's such a great Gen Z film is it's take on horror because what has horror been for, you know, 50 years or a hundred years even, it's been this genre where normal people are going through normal lives and then all of a sudden some horrific thing happens to shake everything up and then their lives change forever. The unique thing about Talk to Me is the horror element of it, they don't surprise you with it. It's just they they introduce it as this is something that has been here for their entire lives. And these teenagers are using it as entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> they're not using it. They're not scared of this thing. They have rules in place that they're like, well, well this this could destroy our lives and in, and in, in we could, you know, be terribly hurt by this. But this is just life. So we're going to take it and make the best out of it. And then they start entertaining themselves with it. And then, of course, it takes a turn when somebody doesn't follow the rules exactly. Um, and I just thought that I was like, I feel that as a, as Gen Z. <laughs> You know, this is such an annoying one that I haven't seen yet. I've been, I've had a few opportunities. I've been meaning to see it. I was out of town last week when I had the opportunities to see it for friends. I've been really excited to see Talk To Me. I just had a friend text me today and he's like, this film is excellent. So I'm definitely like, this will be a movie that I see in theaters. I actually also had a recent release. I'm curious if either of you have seen it. Uh, It just released to Hulu. I think two or three days ago, it had a small theatrical run. It premiered at uh, TIFF last year. It's How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Yes. Oh, that was my number six. Oh, was it your number six? (laughs) Love that movie. Shiva Baby and How to Blow Up a Pipeline. I watched them both today, and I ended up putting How to Blow Up a Pipeline at number five. This film is exceptional from, like, beginning to end. It is a lean hundred minutes of just kind of meanness, of just, like, going for it it's oceans 11 but environmental terrorism essentially as they kind of describe it in this movie like this is it never concerns itself on the 
are they doing the right thing? It is simply we are in the procedure with them as they are trying to blow up a pipeline. And I believe it's West Texas, I believe is where the pipeline That's right. is. Okay. Yep. This thing is thrilling. This is one of the most exciting films that I've seen. And I, I can't recommend how to blow up a pipeline enough. And I don't want to spoil it much because it's such an experience to watch, but really it is just like, it goes in directions that I could have never predicted. So that's my number five. Fantastic choice. I love that movie. It's so good. Morgan, what is your number four? And I'm curious, I feel like we're going to start getting some crossover really soon. Mm -hmm. Um, My number four, I don't know how much, if it counts as Gen Z or not, I know it's very popular with Gen Z, um, is Megan. And I Mm -hmm. selected Megan because I think Megan is a really good example of this, like, camp horror it's like this joke and that's very in right now like whether it's Megan or Cocaine Bear um Renfield was kind of like this as well um and of course these filmmakers are not Gen Z but these movies seem to be really in vogue right now and it's this kind of like violent nasty silly uh technology takeover in a funny way and I think it's basically everything we had been discussing I think Megan kind of it's a movie I didn't expect to, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I didn't expect to like it, but I was like, I don't know. And I saw it, I was like, I really <laughs> enjoyed Megan. I thought it was so funny. And um, yeah. Yeah, that, that that was, I think that definitely qualifies for the list. I wasn't as fond of this movie as other people were, although I do understand the camp appeal to it. And there are certainly some really funny uh, scenes in it, though I do agree. I do think this does fall directly in the conversation that we're having. Michael, what about you? What's your number four? Yeah, uh, b- before I get to the number four, I just wanted to mention one more, one other honor- honorable mention that I had that I was thinking of Evil Dead Rise as well, because I did, re- mm-hmm. I, I just did, I, I loved that movie and I loved the camp and I thought Gen Z, j- all the Gen Z people I know love that movie. The only reason I didn't put it on there was because I'm like, it's a very, it's very similar to the old Evil Dead as well. So I was like, it doesn't feel quite like a Gen Z movie. It just has a lot of elements of it. Um, okay, so my number four is actually another movie that I was uh, lucky enough to see at a South by Southwest. Um, it was Booksmart uh, by Olivia Wilde. That that's movie, my number four as well. That uh, that film is I re- that's the one I rewatched today to prep for this because that what that film I haven't seen it since I haven't seen it since I saw it in uh, at South by. I also um, went to see a, uh, Olivia Wilde speak at a keynote while I was there about the movie. Um, it's so genuine and it's so real and it just like hits every every scene hits perfectly some sort of part of of growing up it's one of the best coming of age films i've ever seen i've i've called it the gen z days to confused it's like yeah it's so it's such a phenomenally done film every actor in it is absolute is an absolute star um uh was uh feinstein i think that's uh her name uh and then oh yes the... and then caitlin beaver um oh and the guy the the i can't i don't know his name skyler something uh he uh plays he's like the rich kid in in book smart but he plays young sean in my favorite show of all time psych so <laughs> i know so i love him um uh, but the the whole movie was so fantastic i still every time i watch that uh scene at the beginning where uh uh she's in the bathroom hearing all the bullies talk and she walks out confidently with this idea that well i'm gonna have a great life after this and you guys peaked and i'm gonna have this great life and then all of them revealed that they also got into great schools but they just enjoyed their time at high school as well that hit me so hard because i was that person who thought everyone else was stupid for for wanting to do this and wanting to do that and i was like well i'm focused on what i'm doing and it wasn't until after I had gotten through all that that I realized I could have probably been doing both the whole time. I had it at number four as well. You hit on all the coming of age aspects of this movie that I think makes it wonderful. The comedy of this movie is exceptional. I will still contend that one of the hardest I've ever laughed in a theater is when Jason Sudeikis accidentally puts on the iPod uh, <laughs> in the car when he's Ubering them. I think that is one of the wildest, funniest scenes I've seen in a movie period i do love this film i we i failed to mention caitlin deaver earlier and billy lord actually to some degree as well i think they are another group that kind of belongs in that zendaya sydney sweeney uh rachel senate uh wave uh morgan i believe you said did you have this at your number two 
Yeah, Booksmart was my number two. Um, similar to Michael, it was a movie I watched and I almost was like, uh, like I almost was like, I can't watch this because it was so accurate to my life that it was disturbing. Um, I was the nerdiest girl in school. I worked so hard in school. High school was my everything and I did not party and I was very uh, focused and, um, you know, continuing to grow up and then being like, I probably could have enjoyed myself a little more and then watching this movie and those girls having that experience wow and then also the soundtrack every song is so good in that movie so good my favorite songs there's like run the jewels there's i mean there um yeah and uh death grips and like oh my god the soundtrack is unreal so i it was my number two i think it's definitely a quintessential gen z story absolutely yeah, fantastic I I, I'm so in favor of Booksmart as well. I think it was such an incredible directorial debut. Oh. And uh, I still have stock in Olivia Wilde simply because of that. Because, don't worry, darling, maybe tested that stock, but I'm still all in because of just oh. how incredible Booksmart was. And I, I, I saw it when I, I said earlier, I saw her keynote speech when she made Booksmart. She, I, 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 she's one of the smartest filmmakers I've ever heard speak. Mm. Honestly, she, I was blown away when I, because I, I didn't have any expectations of of when I saw the movie of if it was going to be good or not. And then after I saw the movie, I had to see the keynote because it was so fantastic. And then hearing everything she saw said about it, it was so eloquent and so well thought out. I was, I was blown away. So I'm, I'm yeah. the same way. I'm, a, I'm a lifelong Olivia Wilde fan now. I have eighth grade as my number, my number three. Bo Burnham's uh, eighth grade. You said it's your number one, Morgan. Yes. Yep. Yeah. These these top three for me are kind of all interchangeable. I think the aspect that makes eighth grade so special to me is the surprise because obviously I knew who Bo Burnham was in 2018. I just didn't know he was capable of this. And since then, it's kind of just been you know he does promising young women. He does his comedy special in lockdown. Like it's this is kind of more of the aspect that Bo Burnham is so interested in. The ability to write an eighth grade girl and actually make it feel authentic is, I think, exceptional. I think what he does in this film is extremely powerful. I it's my one of my favorite father performances in a movie, period. I think the father in the final like third of the film is just absolutely exceptional. Uh Isla Fisher, I believe, is her name, who plays Elsie. Uh, uh, Elsie Fisher. Elsie Fisher. She's just absolutely wonderful. This film is both comedically rich and it's also just has just this this darkness to it that we've all talked about. Like, I think one of the best scenes in the film is the encounter in the car, where you, the fright in that, the tension in it. I I just think it's an exceptional filmmaking. Uh, Morgan, what do you love about eighth grade? I love eighth grade because it's actually eighth grade. I've never, I, I haven't seen a movie. I mean, look, uh, you know, Euphoria is on my list. I'd be remiss if, if it wasn't. It's fantastic. Um, but, you know, a lot of these actors are older and, you know, more glam and more mature, you know, playing these high schoolers or sometimes even middle schoolers. And I think that's what we're used to. It's very Hollywood. But eighth grade is, you know, this girl who's actually so young so raw um i uh, yeah i just haven't seen i mean it was just so moving from start to finish so relatable all the things um that that she goes through and yeah i just i loved how raw and real it was and that she actually her performance was just unbelievable and she really was a, an actual teenager going through teenager things and that just kind of can't be replicated yeah no there's an authentic uh, there's something authentic about their performance uh and everything about this film michael did you have it on your list uh i didn't but i will say and i'll tell you why because i do have and i'll i'm maybe if you're okay with it, i'll skip to it my number two is also a bo burnham project but it's not eighth grade i didn't put eighth grade on here just because and i think it's a phenomenal movie as well but from me, for me, from my perspective on it, it felt to me more like a movie where a millennial was looking at Gen Z in a fish tank instead of it didn't it didn't feel right to me. It didn't. I, I like I said, I love the movie. Everything you guys were saying was spot on. I think it's a phenomenally done film. Um, 
but I don't, I would not really consider it. And I know it's like supposed to be the Gen Z film, but I wouldn't really consider it a Gen Z feeling film. It's more of a Gen Z looking film, but it feels like a millennial film to me. Um, but if you're cool with it, uh, my, my, uh, my second was Inside by Bo Burnham. Um, and that I, I can understand why if some, some people may not uh, agree with that just because some people wouldn't even consider that a film. Um, but to me, that was uh, an absolutely phenomenal piece of art that um, that that he made. And I think I, I wanted to skip to that because I think you can't really have a conversation talking about Gen Z art and culture without bringing up Bo Burnham at some point. Um, I, I would go as far to say that I think there isn't a single artist that has had as much influence on Generation Z as Bo Burnham has. Um, and for me, Inside was really the biggest representation of that, um, of how he made a film and how he made the, the or I guess his comedy special um, and everything involved with it. Everything from the way the, the lighting techniques he was using and the projections. And that's all stuff that like Gen Z is currently developing in film school right now. You know, the, the mirror shots, the, um, the wide angles, the cluttered production design. Um, and then the songs too. The songs were about you know how uh, the the billionaires are taking over and the world's on fire and all these things are happening. And also, I'm super depressed, and I can't think of anything that represents Gen Z better than that. I debated with putting a comedy album on here, and the reason I didn't end up putting one on here because I think you hit the head on the nail, which was uh, just like. I think Bo Burnham is kind of one of the defining voices of it. I also thought John Mulaney was. It's just the issue of John Mulaney is older, but I did think Baby J was really incredible art making, and I think it actually does relate to a lot of the ideas that we're talking about. I didn't end up putting it on there, but I do like having Bo Burnham's insight on here. The more representation Burnham gets on this list, I think the better it is. Morgan, what was your number three? Because we've done your one and two now, correct? Yes, correct. Um, And I kind of touched on my number three. It's Euphoria. You have to mention it. Mm. Um, especially, I mean, really, I guess Euphoria season one, I should clarify. I I mean, it really, to me, is the most Gen Z, Gen Z to Gen Z. I mean, the thing is, is that, of course, like these filmmakers are older. And that's going to be true, I think, for any of these projects, because Gen Z is still relatively young. We're mostly in our 20s, um, late teens kind of kind of thing if I'm not mistaken and so we're definitely on the filmmaking scene but it is still you know probably Sam Levinson's probably at least a millennial or Gen Xer I'm not quite sure but um I think it really is the fashion the music it's Gus Sidney Sweeney it's Zendaya it's Alexa Demi it's Hunter Schaefer it's all of these I mean really Euphoria put these young actors big time on the map as these superstars and um I just, yeah, I mean, I think if an alien were to come to Earth and be like, what is Gen Z? Then I'd say Euphoria season one. Um, it really has kind of like set the tone, I think, for all projects kind of coming after it in its own way. Um, so had to mention it. I, you know, I've never actually seen Euphoria, so I can't speak of it much. I will admit, I just was like, I feel weird about not having Zendaya anywhere on my list, which, spoiler alert, I don't have her anywhere. So I'm like, do I just put the Challengers trailer like on my number five, like that could probably count. I didn't end up doing it, but I I think you hit, I think you're completely right. Like Euphoria seems like it's the defining piece of art in Generation Z. Like I think in a 20 years when we're looking back at it, it's going to be impossible to talk about Generation Z without talking about Euphoria and the stars that it makes because Zendaya is one of the biggest stars in the world right now. Uh, so that was your number three and michael did we do your number three no i skipped i skipped it to number two but uh my number three my number three is probably gonna be controversial as well um uh, but whatever it's comment it'll boost the engagement um <laughs> my my number three I'm clipping and this, here... by the way like this is gonna be the tiktok reel right now yeah. <laughs> um my number three and i cheated because i put two movies here but it's the same filmmaker. It was two movies back to back. And I think they the reasoning is the same. Um, and hear me out because it doesn't sound like Gen Z films. But my 
number three was Noah Bombatch's Marriage Story and White Noise. Mm-hmm. And the reason I have both of those on there is because I feel like it represents the anxiety and the reason for our anxiety. I think Marriage Story is a perfect representation of, I mean, Generation Z is, I, I don't know this for a fact, so someone could fact check me, but I, um, I'm i pretty sure that Gen Z is the generation that has the most children of divorce out of any generation. Um, I'd be confident to put money on it. I believe the divorce rate spiked when we were all like kids. So um, I think, uh, or, or peaked, I should say. So Marriage Story, I think, is a perfect kind of like window into the Gen X that is most of our parents. Some of us have older parents, but most of our parents are going to be that Gen X um, and seeing kind of what went through their mind and the chaos of what was going on during our childhoods. And on that same point, White Noise, which is a phenomenal movie. It's not it's not Novant Badge's best movie necessarily. I've also heard the book is very good. I've never read the book though. Um, but White Noise on Netflix is um, a film that perfectly encapsulates, I think, the ideas that Gen Z has had for a while where lots of older generations will say, hey, this isn't that much of a problem. And I know that because I've had all these experiences. And Gen Z is the one saying, hey, your experiences don't necessarily matter in this case because this has never happened before. And Gen Z is the voice of that because Gen Z doesn't have that prior experience to inform this decision making. They only have what the, you know, the science and the facts in front of us. Um, so I think white noise and, uh, specifically a lot, I mean, Adam driver, basically in both of those movies represents what I feel like caused the anxiety of this generation. Um, so I, yeah, that's, that's my number three went off the rails a little bit. But. No, I like the, I like the pick and I like the idea of the window of the generation that kind of raised us is such an interesting topic, uh, in this. I struggled not having Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird on here. I just felt that it was technically for the generation before. So yeah. that's why I ended up not putting it on. I'm a Sacramento native, so like that one was one that I was really trying to get on, uh, yeah. but ultimately could not do it. So that means at this moment, I haven't revealed my one and two. Morgan, we revealed all of your five, if I'm correct. And Michael, you have your number one that you haven't shared yet. So I'm curious if we have overlap here. I'll say my number two is Megan Park's The Fallout. Uh, this was a movie that came out to HBO a year, year and a half ago. It premiered at South by Southwest. It stars Jenna Ortega. This was the first time I had ever actually seen Jenna Ortega on screen. She plays a survivor of a school shooting. Uh, there's this other actress, I believe her name is Maddie Ziegler, uh, who's in this film. And it's kind of their friendship coping post this, uh, directed by actress Megan Park. I believe she's 36 years old. And it's just kind of an interesting, fascination, fascinating look into this horrible phenomenon that is going on currently in our school systems. And one that I just don't think gets enough attention, you know, being the son of uh, parents who are both teachers, having a sister who works uh, in education as well. This film just emotionally hit me. So that's why it's my number two. I don't know if either of you have seen this film. I've heard of it, but I have not been able to to check it out yet. Very much worth the watch. So, Michael, I'm going to let you present your number one, and I'm curious if we have the same number one. I I, I would be surprised, but maybe not. I, I I'm curious. Um, the my number one is a bit more of a personal choice for me, uh, and it may not make sense initially, but I'll explain it a little more. My number one Gen Z film is Sean Baker's The Florida Project. And mm-hmm. the the Florida Project. So backstory on me: I I was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, what you know, di- didn't have like the most money in the world or anything. A uh, very strange situation where like my my dad lived on a sailboat and my mom was a sh- very a struggling. She was a physician, which sounds like we'd be in we'd be rolling in it, but like the truth is in Florida, especially in the early 2000s, physicians were not um, paid very well and uh, medical administrations were not treating them very well. And my mom was uh, uh, kind of constantly struggling. Um, and we didn't, you know, we lived in a really small house and uh, didn't have like the hurricane proof windows or anything. So we were putting up the loud metal hurricane shutters and stuff where bricks would just like bash into them and 
terrify everybody in the house or all the kids at least me and my sister um and it wasn't it was it was constantly we were and then and then the 2008 housing crisis started in fort lauderdale florida and uh it was it was just all of a really difficult situation but you could me and my sister could not have told you that because we didn't notice at all um the the innocence of being uh, a child in that in that circumstance especially when you had parents that were as phenomenal as mine were you we, we we never even noticed that that we were struggling with anything we never really we didn't notice that the world was ending all around us never noticed 9 11 happened not never noticed that um that the housing market was crashing we never noticed really any of these uh any of these disasters that were happening uh around us plus we you know it's the same uh and i i think that's what the florida project you know for me it really like I I can't watch that movie without just sobbing, just ugly sobbing, because it I I like watch my childhood again, and I remember being innocent and remember the 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 blissful ignorance that I had back then of watching you know doing the you know live thirty minutes from South Beach and three hour a few hour drive from uh, from Orlando and and it's the it's literally the exact thing of like being able to see the fireworks from outside of the park. Um, and being so happy about that because you don't, I, I, you know, I never knew what it was like inside the park. So watching the fireworks from outside the park seemed like the best thing that could happen. Um, I don't know, maybe that's not like necessarily Gen Z specific. Maybe it's more me specific. I had it on the long list as well. I, Sean Baker's an incredible director. Uh, Defoe's performance in this movie is just exceptional. I, I, I actually prefer his follow-up project, Red Rocket. But I haven't seen it. Ooh. Is exceptional filmmaking, which leaves, I guess, that's my number one. Which I was curious if this one was going to fall in on either of your guys' list. I like didn't actually ever consider it a part of this like type of filmmaking that we're talking. But then when I saw it on other people's list and I thought about it, I'm like, oh, of course, like this is very much clearly uh, Gen Z filmmaking. And I'm like, well, at this case, then I'm going to have it at my number one because of the authentic. Authenticity of this story and what it represents, and literally a childhood being looked at over, I think it's the span of twelve years. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. One. I I just like Richard Linklater's Boyhood. It's kind of a, an exceptional thing to be the voice of a generation for decades. Obviously, he comes out of with Dazed and Confused. Some would even probably consider School of Rock kind of that, you know, coming of age story for. The early 2000s and then like book smart sorry not book smart sorry i apologize i was looking down at my list and then boyhood was like this film that explores my childhood like i think i am the exact same age that the boy in boyhood is growing up the scenes of like you know anticipating the seventh harry potter book coming out in 2007 all these like little moments throughout i just found such an authentic realization of growing up my age which is such a hard thing to do and i just think it's an exceptionally beautiful film have you guys seen boyhood absolutely yeah that's i that's a great pick too that to be that that age and to grow up uh exactly that how he did with all the the different situations that happen with the divorce and the stepdads and all these different things it's absolutely that's a great number one choice yeah, no, I love it. And then we'll, we'll wrap up this conversation, but I did want to just give everyone the chance to just rattle off honorable mentions just real quick. Morgan, did you have any that were just like you wanted on this list but couldn't get it on? You know, I mean, I think for me, it is a lot of TV, like you were saying. I mean, the mm -hmm. thing is, is that that's really, I think, so big with our generation is kind of this age of television that really has come into its own. Um, and so, I mean, of course, American Vandal is fantastic it's so um good. it's so good it's just the best um i'm also i'm kind of biased because i love the filmmakers but um yeah just fantastic um there's you know what there's actually a lot of animation that i think mm. gen z loves animation i think more than a lot of other kind of like more adult animation um again still kind of made by people of were a little bit older, but I think that kind of comedy is has become really big with Gen Z. Um, and just like handling a little bit more darkness than before, you know? And I mean, I was thinking about it and I think there's been so much 
darkness throughout all of human history and all these horrors, but we just weren't so aware. And uh, with that awareness, it's a, it's a great thing. And it's also a very difficult thing to be seeing it from all over, just all of this, this footage, these things that are happening all over the planet. Um, and so I think that that reflects, there's a lot of, of darkness, even in the animation. Um, I mean, yeah, Rick and Morty is, is really, really big. And I feel like kind of our generation loves that. And then South Park has been going for about a million years, but they always do a really great job of, uh, you know, kind of having this little snapshot of the times that we're in. Um, so, yeah. In, That's a good one. In terms of animation, I can definitely tell you, Into the Spider-Verse, I just really couldn't quantify it necessarily as fully Gen Z, but it is one of my favorite films of all time. So it was on the short list. Inside Out was also kind of in that conversation for me. Yeah. I just couldn't really know if I made the case as well as these other five films. I'm like, I don't know if the Gen Z-ness of it is so rooted in it. Uh, Michael, what about you? What are a few titles that you were like, this was on the list, didn't actually get on the uh, final Yeah. Film? Okay, well, how to blow up a pipeline that was on that was on my honorable mentions list. Um, I tried to keep it short too. I was thinking of so many th different things. Um, my one of my favorite films of all time, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Alfonso Go uh, Gomez Rajon. So I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's so so brilliant. It's not quite like exclusively a Generation Z film, but it's one of the greatest teen coming of age films that I've ever seen. And it's the same, it's the it's like a comfort movie for me. So I love that one. Um, Dope by uh Rick Famuyiwa. I think that's how you pronounce that too. Um, no, I, actually I'm I'm blanking on how you pronounce his name. Sorry, go on. Yeah, it's all good. Dope. Uh that's the movie. It's so, so great. Um, and it represents the only and, and it kind of like I almost love how it initiates all the obsessions with 90s culture that a lot of Gen Z people do have. Um, so love, love, love that movie. Um, I also put uh, Anish uh, Chiganti Searching. Uh, I thought that was a that it, it's obviously doesn't really it has like one Gen Z character in it, maybe. But the whole thing taking place from a social media or not social media, but from like a desktop platform and and on the phone and the text messages and the social oh, media. Yes, like the, the mystery film. Yes. Uh, are you referring to searching or missing? Searching. OK, That's yeah, searching I'm... is incredible. Yeah, it's a phenomenal. I was so impressed, by the way, when I and when I saw it, because I was not expecting anything with that style. And then it blew me away. In fact, to be honest with you, that movie is a huge influence on Ben and Lacey. That was the movie that I saw that I was like, oh, you know what? You can go you can deviate from traditional filmmaking and still have a really incredible story uh, in it and uh, incredible uh, uh, performances as well in that style. Uh, and then my last honorable mention, of course, Hereditary, uh, Ari Aster. Oh, such interesting. A, yeah, such a good uh, horror film. Amazing first feature. Um, and I think it does represent, uh, I, I do think it's, it, it, you know, might not be it, the best representation of Gen Z, which is why I didn't put it on the actual list. But it's just, I feel like it's too good of a film to even not put on here. I had a few honorable mentions myself. I'll just breeze through them. I had Cha-Cha Real Smooth was an honorable mention for me. I had the film, uh, The Edge of 17 was on mm. mention for me. I had uh, Shiva Baby, as I mentioned. There was this movie with, I'm blanking on her name right now, uh, Zoe Dutch, I believe is her name, but Not Okay, which came out to Netflix last year, which is a really dark comedic look into some of the social anxiety and social media that we've talked about. And the last one, and I wanted to actually get just, if you guys actually thought it qualified, did, does everything everywhere all at once count? Ooh. Oh, that's well, such a it tough is one. Everywhere, all at once. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it, it um, it's tricky because I, like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I she think is the age that we're talking about, but I just don't know if that's the focus of the film enough to really count. Which is yeah, why I make the list. I think it's more, I mean, to be honest, everything everyone all wants is almost too timeless, I feel like, to be categorized as a Gen Z film because it's such it's such an instant classic that I, I feel like you could put it in any time period and it would it would work. Um, and I also agree, I think it's more the focus on uh, the the two older characters in it. Um, yeah. Can't think of their names. I parents, do which is also think... why they put blockers on. Sorry, Morgan, what were you saying? No, no not at all. Uh, I think it is interesting, though, because thinking about it, it is a really good example of the comedy that yeah. and the creativeness that we are really loving to see it and you know what is i think with the rise of social media 
And there's all of these layers of all of these lives that we live. There's the life we actually live. There's the life that we show that we live. There's the life we could be living. And everything, everywhere, all at once kind of shows all of these iterations of a person's life and possibilities. And I think that that is very much a Gen Z theme of breaking the mold in all of these ways that your life could go, that you're hyper aware of because of technology and the way we can change our faces, our image, our, you know, whatever it is. And interestingly, I said animation earlier and like, hear me out, but Puss in Boots, The Last Wish Mm. is also kind of in this idea of having these different lives and these different possibilities, the ways that things can go. And that movie is just anxiety. It's all about anxiety. Um, And your impending demise, which is very Gen Z. And so I think that that's just really the core right now. So everything, everywhere all at once, even though I agree with you, Michael, it focuses on the older couple and, and on the daughter. And I love that it has like the LGBTQ elements, which I think is another Gen Z staple. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness, very important. Um, we're getting all of these different perspectives. But because it's tricky, because all, all of these filmmakers tend to be just a little bit older, but it is speaking to where we're heading, which is the undercurrent that is Gen Z, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, so. that totally makes sense. It's why I ended up, I it's I, I was thinking your logic as well, Morgan, which is why I didn't end up putting it on the list, but I did just want to throw it out as an honorable mention. Well, thank you guys for indulging me in this exercise. Michael, Morgan, where can people find Ben and Lacey? Uh, ben and Lacey is available completely for free right now on Tubi. Um, uh, believe it's also, if you don't want an ad, I think it's, uh, also available for purchase on Amazon prime video. Um, yeah, check it out. Um, Ben, thanks so much for, for having us. Thank you, Ben. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll have links to that, uh, on my YouTube description, my podcast description. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this discussion on Gen Z. If you like this video, make sure to like, and subscribe. My name's Ben Friedman here from the Beniverse Movie Channel. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.